Good day. Confound it here. And today we're going to be talking. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. That, that's not how I do this. Anyhow, what's up, people? Confound it here. And today I am bringing you part five of our ArcSoft Showbiz tutorial series on how to make a montage. This is the last bit of it. And if you can't tell, I am so excited to be done with this. And man, I, I, I tell you what. Anyhow, what we're going to be talking about today is what I like to call the 80 20 or you know finishing up the project the last steps you know it's just about done and the reason why I call it 80 20 is because it seems like alright you've got a hundred percent of the work and then let's say you spend four hours on eighty percent of it so then you got twenty percent left well you need to spend four hours on the last twenty percent as well just because you know you need to take pride in your work pay attention to the details and get everything just as exactly perfect as you want it I mean you know you put a lot of time and effort into this all the way from playing the game to recording it to getting this far to making a montage so you know treat it with some respect alright so before we get started on this I'm just gonna go ahead and say that uh, I'm gonna put well I've already got the other four parts up and then I'll be putting this part up and then I'm gonna edit all five of the parts together and put up one whole long you know however long it is it'll probably be like 40 minutes or whatever else but this way you'll have the option to watch it all the way through or you can watch the individual parts and you can always come back to the parts where you're going to have questions at and speaking of questions if y'all have any questions at all or any kind of comments use that little box below and uh, leave me a comment I'm usually pretty quick about getting back to them and I'll do my best to help you alright so the whole point of this final step is getting everything all lined up and make, making sure that everything is all perfect you know um, getting things as close to as perfect as you can with the software making sure that actions are ending on beats wherever possible I mean you can't you can't remap or change time in um, inside of the software so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for you but if you take the extra effort to get most of it correct and make it look as professional as you possibly can people will notice and then as you um, build your subscriber base up and everything else and you know you're able to save up a little bit of money you can uh, get on um, a more advanced level software you know hobbyist level there's uh, I don't know Arcsoft has some stuff out there um, there's Adobe Premiere Elements uh, Sony Vegas has a I think one for under a hundred dollars I mean it, the options are out there but just um the whole point of these series was to make sure that this was something that you wanted to do and to give you the best chance at succeeding with this software. So we're three minutes into this now. I've talked enough. Let's uh, go ahead and get this done. Alright, so um, right here I've got the first clip and I've got the music on it this time and you all should be able to hear the music as it plays. So let's just take a quick listen. Alright, so we got a kill there. And I'm not on the entire project, so y'all completely missed the music, and so did I. Start over. That's just the program getting all herky-jerky. Told you that was a technical term. Alright, did you see right there how um I had it lined up where the... It, I replaced the clip on the beat that's one of those little uh, details that you're going to need to pay attention to because it doesn't necessarily have to be a kill or anything else just make sure that there's some bit of action that's hitting on a beat and it doesn't have to be every one because you, you're going to go crazy and you're probably going to break your monitor or your laptop or a window or it's going to get expensive if you try and line up every one of them I'm not saying it can't be done and you'll probably be able to after you've done maybe 10 or 12 of these and you've become a master of the showbiz but until then you know just go with every now and again but now to just briefly show you how I did that I'm just gonna click on um actually let me click on one of these clips over here and it's getting a little bit crazy on me so I'm gonna go ahead and save my project and uh, let me remind y'all y'all need to save often save often it's better to save when you don't need to than to have wished you would have well, whatever I've I've lectured on this before anyhow so when once you've got your clip selected you can see right here it's called an endpoint and out point 
and what this is is when you trimmed using the multiple trim this is the outside of the scissor marks so end point you got green for in and I don't I guess that's pink for red or pink for out but what you can do is instead of going back into the multiple trim and trying to work through everything else again you can just grab on right here see how my cursor has changed into this uh, double pointing arrow you can either roll at it or you can ripple at it if you scroll left on the selected clip or not scroll left but if you mouse left on it you're going to roll at it or add to it if you come back to the right you're going to take away from it and then you can kind of see if you look right here you can tell by looking at the um, the waveform that there's a bit of uh, action in the music not necessarily in the shot but in the music and then if you match up right here you can look at the form factor for the audio from the gameplay and you can kind of see that something happened there as well see right here something happened right there something happened right there so just as a little frame of reference if you can get those kind of lined up you're going to save yourself a little bit of a step so let me click that so we can get the entire project and see how that looks y'all hear that grenade in the background that's what that was so you know it, even if it's a distant explosion it's still going to sync up with the beat of the music and it's going to be a pleasant viewing experience so that's how you can really tweak the clips on your timeline now let's um look into adding effects and transitions and everything else and i really like to do that at storyboard mode storyboard mode right here and the reason for that is, is because you know it, i can see exactly where the cuts are and then I'll switch back to the timeline to make sure and you know I'm gonna go with them um, my old standby I accidentally clicked on effects I want to transitions I've told you before how I like to fade things in and fade things out so that's what I'm gonna do actually I called it walking them on and walking them off and now I'm gonna save because I'm messing with effects I mean transitions again all right, so now we have what I call my defaults, fading on and fading off, or fading in and fading out, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to look up here at these transitions and see if I can see something that's going to flip. All right, that spirals. That zooms in and out. Now, zooming in and out, that would carry along with... Let me back up a little bit. Right now, I'm, I'm thinking about this because it's in my line of sight. Up, oh, speaking of sight, see what I did there? Anyhow, now zooming in and out that would correlate to you know a sniper zooming so you see how I'm keeping the thought with what they're seeing it's like you know you wouldn't want to um, do this one like a, a blind door out for a sniper zoom alright so what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss that on there because I want to check it out switch back to the timeline it's back up there I'm going to click on the audio so I can drag it back so everything's nice and cohesive alright and I'm going to click off of everything so it selects the entire project I'm just going to pull right back to here and remember, it might be a little bit herky-jerky just because, I mean, that's how it is. But uh, once you've got some experience in the program, you'll be able to realize. Yeah, that would have looked good if it wouldn't have messed up on me. Let me try that one more time. I'm going to go back just a little bit further. Here it is. Okay, so that takes care of that one. Now, let's talk about um, when you should use transitions. Let me save again real quick. 
I'd hate to lose all this work. All right, so my rule of thumb when I use a transition is whenever there's a break in thought. And what I mean by a break in thought is when there should, all right, let's think about a movie for a second. Now, th there can be several scenes in a clip of a movie, but throughout that whole scene, they don't fade off or they don't fade to black. They don't do any, uh, any kind of other transition. They just cut exactly to the other clip. And the reason why is because it's supposed to be in the same thought process. Transitions are supposed to help us transition to another thought, if you will. So really the only place I use transitions is when there's supposed to be a break in scenery or a break in something else. Like, okay, it did that match begins in three, two, like, all right, let's say in Black Ops 2, you have two rounds. I would definitely use a transition once the sides switched if that makes sense because you, you're essentially facing from two different sides of the map it should be a new thought a new round but something like um through here I'm all I'm still all in this section of the map so this could be considered you know still one scene in an epic fight scene if in fact my gameplay was epic but we're not talking about my gameplay but honestly and truly it's your montage it might be your gameplay it might be your clans it might be a friend of yours it might be anything else but um you know it it's yours do with it what you will but uh you know just put some love into it and you you will develop your own style as soon as you've done this more and more you'll you'll come to your own workflow you'll find out works what works for you what works best how you work the most efficiently and get the best results that you're proud of so with that and in conclusion to our five-part series on making a montage and how to do commentaries and everything else we've learned in ArcSoft I now send y'all out into the world to make epic masterpiece montages and if um I've done anything to help y'all out and y'all have used anything at all um, be sure to leave a send me a message leave a video response on any one of the corresponding videos and I will gladly approve it I'll put it on my Twitter I'll put it on my Facebook page I'll well I was about to say I'd put it on the moon but I can't afford a rocket so I'll put it everywhere I possibly can so y'all have a great day and y'all have fun with this Oh yeah, and y'all come back now, you huh?